Good morning from Stad again. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to figure that out later. But good morning. All right, the start of day six. I'm currently watching the ferry boats rolling into dock to load up the cars and take people to other islands. Got to watch them load up the last night. It was pretty cool. All the cars just drive right up. Uh, yeah, today, well, we just did breakfast. The food everywhere has just been phenomenal. Love the food here. So good. Really big on the preventative health. They've got these ginger shots that you can take every morning, but like just one shot. The ginger helps with anti-inflammatories, energy levels, digestion, all sorts of stuff. But you only really need one. If you, do, you drink too much of it, you can actually throw off your blood sugar and the acidity can mess with you. So really only one a day in the morning. Just to get your dough It's pretty cool. Well, today though, we head off towards Homestead. Fall on the coast, we got a few steps. Pretty excited. It's a little chilly out. This is gonna be a little chilly, but uh, it's fine with me. We brought sweaters on purpose. We've actually gotten really lucky. Um, when I originally checked the forecast, we'll plan this trip, normal weather around this time is like high 60s, low 70s, comfortable sweater weather. To about a week or so before coming out here, the weather's been shifting. Yay, global warming. And it has been rainier and chillier. Well, packed for that. We've been lucking out. We've only gotten a little bit of rain in like the evenings, or early mornings, and we've had clear days. It's actually been a little warmer than I thought it would be, but we're also pretty comfortable. In the evenings, you definitely still need it, especially on the coast. But, yeah. It's good weather. Good, good weather. All right, off to Homestead we head with stops along the way. First stop on today's journey is Skenor. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's a little coastal town. They have little beach huts that you can stay in. They're very tiny. Uh, they have like just a bed, a little kitchen area, and that's it. People will just spend the summers out here in the little huts. They go fishing. They go back to their huts at night. We lucked out. It's not raining yet, but there's definitely clouds in the distance, so we won't be here for very long. Come in the, the peak of the summer, it's probably really pretty, nice weather, gorgeous. But it's very peaceful out here. Very, very peaceful. Oh. There are some dark clouds heading in. It's a little chilly, so we are heading back to the car already. It's a quick stop. We just wanted to see the little huts and see the views. But we're going to head off now to a museum. Unfortunately, the museum was a bust. I apparently misread something and they're actually only open Friday through Sunday for the Viking Museum. And well, it's Thursday, we're a day early. But now we're on to the next portion. We are at the Grave by the Sea. The Grave by the Sea uh, was created by the Dolomans, which were people that were around 3200 to 3600 BC. And this is how they would do little burial grounds and they would even put like pots of food and things inside the chambers. 
it was actually pretty cool, but yeah. From a distance, you would think that it's just a random mound of dirt in the middle of a field. I guess they discovered it back in 1840 something by accident, but it is a grave. So the body was buried just out front of the entryway. So kind of like the Egyptians, they would get buried with items and belongings to take with them to the afterlife. So you had your body buried in the front and then the mound behind it was a little storage place for those items and belongings to take with them. At least that's how it seems. I might have to do some research, but we'll find out. All right, we've come and seen the grave by the sea. We paid our respects, and now we head on to the next stop. And for our next stop on this historical awesome trip is, hopefully saying it right, Cotternin. It is a medieval tower left over in Helsingborg. So in Cunnernan Tower, you can actually pay to go in and actually go all the way up, all 146 steps to the very top of the tower. There's little exhibitions uh, as far as the museum goes along the way, and you can learn little facts about the, the rooms in the tower and some history about the medieval times in Helsingborg. If you come out here, it's really, really not expensive at all. I, I highly recommend checking it out, at least just for the view. Now that we've gotten a chance to go climb the tower, a museum that actually was open, uh, we are headed now to the next stop, and I think it's still in Helsingborg. It's a palace and a palace garden. Our next stop is the Sofiero Palace and Palace Gardens. Currently though, they are under renovation, so we will have to see the view with scaffoldings, but it's still pretty awesome to be here and we'll still get to see it. They're just trying to renovate things, bring it to the newest century is what the sign said. Garden. The gardens here are really gorgeous. There's so many different types of plants and flowers. It's just breathtaking. And if you have kids and you want to come out here, 
They have a really cool little uh, forest playground for the kiddos. It's it's something else. I I mean, I might not be a kid, but I definitely want to go play on it. <laughs> Next little playground area is the Salgoskag. It's a Prince Oscar's Enchanted Forest. Definitely has the Enchanted Forest vibes. We came, we wandered, we played, climbed through the trees in the enchanted forest. As you see, they are doing renovations. So I guess I'm just gonna have to come back to play again some more and see it when it's not renovating. Hmm, not a bad thing. But now we need to head along. They're starting to get hungry and we gotta move on to the next stop. All right, so after we went to leave the gardens, uh, some weather rolled in, and also apparently people want to go shopping. So we decided no more stops for the day. We just headed to Homestead to hit to our hotel. Uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm tired anyway. Plus it gives me a chance to go explore shops, pick up some souvenirs for people, and just hopefully go to bed early tonight because I think I need extra sleep. Five, six hours a night, not enough after all the driving. But we're in Homestead. Homestead? Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. It makes sense. And uh, yeah, we're in our hotel. This is my room for the night. Sadly, no view for this room uh, like the others. It just, our room faces inwards into like this, it's like a weird, courtyard thing. The grandparents at least have a view, so that's good. We don't have a view. No worries. I, I'll live. I don't plan on being in the room much. I plan on taking care of a Swedish parking ticket. Which, by the way, if you were to come here, easy park. Download the app. Makes your life so much easier. And always ask every hotel about parking, because you'll think that the parking lot's their parking lot. In actuality, they don't own the parking lot. You didn't know that. The GoPro's trying to die on me, sorry. We'll talk more about parking stuff later. But yeah, I'm gonna go find the grandparents, get things squared away, take care of the park ticket, and then go explore Homestead. Yes, yes. All right, Sweden, day six. Check and done. Recap of today. We left, where did we leave this morning? I don't remember where we were this morning. <laughs> Basically running on fumes now. But we are in Homestead tonight. Where were we last night? Wow, I'm tired. We were somewhere last night with awesome church bells ringing. I remember the church. I can't remember the name. Ah, Ystad, Ystad. There we go. <laughs> Here he's dead. So we left Ystad. Uh, and we headed north. Uh, up the coast. Because we basically went from Stockholm all the way down the back part. We hit the very bottom. The Ystad, the most southern point of Sweden. And now we're making our way back up the coast on the other side towards Gothenburg. We are in Homestead now. There were pros and cons of today. 
we got to see. So we went to Skinner. I think that's the right one. Cute little beach huts on, on fishing huts on the beach. Cute little things. There was some weather today, so the weather wasn't amazing. We've gotten really lucky the last few days, so I mean, it was bound to run out of luck eventually with the weather. But that's no biggie. Did have a bust, did make it to the Viking Museum that I wanted to go to, because I misread some things. Double check when you're making plans to do this, days and everything. Things might change due to seasons, because we're technically off season. Normally, the American tourist season is from May until the end of July, mid July. And then mid July through mid August is typically, towards the end of August, is like the German tourist season for Sweden, I guess. We're at the end of Sweden. Best part is we've missed the crowds. We have a lot less people around. We're not dealing with fighting people to get into things, which is awesome. Downfall. Some things are now closing for the season or have already started renovating, like today when we went to the so Sofira Palace. Because their summer tour season ended, they started renovations. The gardens were beautiful still. And so was the kids zone, that enchanted forest. Oh, I gotta figure, see if I can plant those kind of trees wherever I buy a house one day, because that was awesome. But the castle itself it was in a renovation. That's fine. It's gonna come back to it again later. Um, you know, we also, we saw the Kanar, Kanar, Kanar. I'm also learning that I, Duolingo has failed me. There's some stuff that Duolingo has gotten right, but then there's a lot of stuff that Duolingo for Swedish has absolutely failed on pronunciation. Even though it makes you hear a recording and makes you talk into it, that recording is so off on how they pronounce things. I actually got into a conversation. I found a Fjallraven store uh, in Sweden. It's basically their version of REI in a way, their outdoor store. And their one of their employees came up, started talking to me in Swedish, straight, just talking to me. I don't know what he said to me. And I just looked at him like, uh, nope. And he's just like, oh, sorry, American, sorry. He's like, we don't usually get a lot of people in here that look Swedish, but then actually don't speak Swedish. I guess I look Swedish. I mean, it is part of my heritage. Grandma's family is from here. So, I mean, I get, I guess I look Swedish, even though I'm not blonde. Uh, but yeah, he was like, oh, it's okay. Total, he took, spoke English. So that was great. We had a full conversation about outdoor stores and everything. So it was pretty, pretty fun. Um, but part of the conversation was talking about how I've been trying to learn Swedish, but I'm not doing very well. And he even told me, no, it's a very, very hard language to learn. Well, we also called, uh, my grandma's cousin Britt, who we're going to be staying at her house in a couple of days. We'll be visiting a family there. Uh, and she started saying names of streets on the phone. I had me write them down and I was looking at them and she was pronouncing them. I was like, this is nowhere near how Duolingo has taught me to pronounce these things. So I'm learning that Duolingo has failed me. I'm trying to learn it here as much as I can. I'm trying so hard. It's much easier to learn language when you are surrounded by it than it is to be learning on Duolingo and have no one around you that speaks it. So it's kind of nice to be able to be here and try to apply what I have learned. Not all of it is horribly wrong. But there's a good chunk wrong. <laughs> We're getting there. But, yeah. yeah. It, Homestead isn't really touristy. There's not a whole lot here that's really big to come see. Um, so if you do end up in Homestead, don't expect a lot of touristy type things. Unless it's like the very middle of summer and they're like prepared for you. But tomorrow we head to Gothenburg and Gothenburg is definitely going to be more touristy. So there's a lot more to do there. I'm pretty tapped though. As after tonight, I'm just after driving and every little traveling, the lack of sleep I can get in. long days. What I'm super excited about tomorrow is 
I get at least an extra hour of sleeping in tomorrow morning. The drive from Homestead to Gothenburg is only maybe an hour and a half, give or take. And we only have a couple stops planned. So we don't need to be leaving super early as crack of dawn. We can leave at a little more mid-morning pace. And we'll get to Gothenburg still in great time and we'll have time to do their shopping because if you're in Homestead looking for souvenirs and things, you're not going to find it. The grandparents went hunting. I went hunting. No. Nope. Maybe middle of summer. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't been here in the middle of summer. But right now, definitely not going to really find that kind of stuff. Oh, well. Um, so tomorrow, Gothenburg. Gothenburg will be shopping for them and souvenirs for them because we didn't have any luck today. But we're going to get there early enough. It's fine. Totally fine with me. But I can sleep in at least one hour tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. But yeah. I'm going to call it a night. And tomorrow, we continue on. Next stop, Gothenburg.